Welcome back, everybody, to our traffic light project. In this session, we are going to use our colored bulb from the last session and use it to create a traffic light with three colored bulbs, one for red, one for green, one for yellow. So let's create a new class. So we're going to create a new Java class, and we're going to call it traffic light. And this is important to check to make sure it goes in the right source folder here. And since we don't have this is blank, we're going to hit cancel and make sure we're selected the correct source folder and then go back and create another class. And so we'll name this again traffic light. Click finish. And for our traffic light, we'll need to import color. So we'll do import java.awt.color. And we'll need to put in our instance fields, constructor, accessors, and mutators. Okay, so since our traffic light has three bulbs, we are going to build an array that will store the three bulb objects. So we'll say private bulb, and a Java array is initiated by an open and closed bracket. We're going to call the array lights, and we'll add the bulbs to the array uh, when we install create an instance of traffic light. So down here in our constructor we'll say public traffic light and then lights is equal to new bulb and we'll set the size of the array to 3. So each item in the array is referenced by its index number so lights at position 0 is equal to new bulb and the red light will be on so we'll set that to true the color is red and the color name is red and lights at position 1 is equal to new bulb and we'll set this one to off so we'll pass in false for our boolean the color will be yellow and the color name of course will be yellow <coughs> and lights at two the last position on our array of three bulbs will be for our green light so we'll say new bulb and at the beginning, the green light will be off. So we'll say false, color green, and our color name will be green. OK, so now we need an assessor and a mutator for our, each of our instance fields. In this case, we need one for our array. So if we want to return the what's in the array, we say public bulb open and close brackets get lights. And notice our return type is an array. So therefore we have to use bulb open and close brackets instead of double or integer. And then we return the lights array. And then if we want to um, set the array, set something in the array, we say public void set lights bulb lights. And this of course is a local array. 
and after we use this method it will be deleted so what we're going to do is then whatever array we pass in we're going to set that array to the lights array so there's our getter and sessors for the array <coughs> now we need our algorithm for changing the lights on the traffic light And this is an algorithm rather than a calculation. Now, many algorithms have mathematics at their base, but an algorithm is a step-by-step -step process for completing a task. And so we're not really doing any math. We're just, it's a step-by-step -step process for changing the light. So we'll say public void next state. That's what I've decided to name the method, which is going to change the state of our traffic light from red to green to yellow. And we'll say that this is a comment to change the light from red to green. So if lights at zero, which is our red light, is on, and notice now we're calling the is on method from our bulb class. We do open and close curly braces. Then basically we want to turn off the red light and turn on which is at position zero and turn on the green light which is at position two in our array. So we say lights at zero and we call the turn off method in our bulb. Class. And then we're going to say lights at position 2. We're going to turn on. And then we need to go be able to go from green to yellow. And we're going from green to a red light. So we'll say else if lights at 2 is on, then we'll turn off the green light and turn on the yellow light. So lights at 2 turn off, and lights at 1 which is our yellow light will turn on. And our last condition then, I believe, is to go from yellow to red. So we'll say else if lights at 1 is on, which is our yellow light. Take lights at 1 and turn it off. And then lights at 0, which is our red light, and turn it on. And so that completes our algorithm for changing the light bulb from the light from green to red or red to green. In other words, from one state to another. Now, when, I, when you start getting conditionals inside of methods, I like to put in um, end of comments. And so this is end of conditional. And then this one is end of method. And this helps keep track, keeps programmers and students track of nested um, curly braces. And this one at the end is our end of class. Alright, so an, now what we need to do is um, add our two string. 
So public string to string. And then we're going to create a local variable for our string. And we'll set it to empty. And then we're going to use a, lo uh, a loop to walk through each of the bulbs and print them out. So we'll use a for loop because we know that we only need to walk through our lights array, which is three. So we'll say for int k is equal to zero, as long as k, which is an indeterminate variable name that I just picked. And then what we can do is say lights.length. And that, as our max value, that way, instead of just putting three, if we ever wanted to go back and change the length of our array, we could do that and we wouldn't have to change this from three to four or three to five because length is just going to go to the end of the array and one at a time and print out the lights for us. And then we'll count up and I'm going to go ahead and put in my end of loop comment and end of two string comment so I keep those curly braces straight. So we're going to add a string of whether the light is on or off to each um, each time through the iteration and then print the whole thing out. So we'll say result plus equals bulb plus k plus 1 plus is plus lights at k dot get color name plus and plus lights at k dot to string dot to lowercase and then we'll add a carriage return to this also at the end of each line and then once we've gone through each item in the array we will return our result All right, so in our next video, we will test out our traffic light class with a runner, and we'll see if we have any bugs we have to take care of. See you next time.